Hey, well, welcome to a little bonus episode. This is just a little beer tasting, a solo dome. Uh, the first one I did was uh, actually Byzantine Vision uh, back a couple weeks ago. I, I soloed my last bottle right before I took it up to Bottle Logic and redeemed it for a tasty full bottle of Jam the Radar. Um, if you watched that one, you s- will note that I uh, definitely had an infected bottle. It was mildly infected, not crazy infected. Um, Jam the Radar is much, much better. Whoa, way better. Um, yeah, so today's little solo dome mission is uh, a beer that I found last time I was up in uh, Orange County, actually. Mr. K's Bottle Shop. Shout out to Mr. K's. That place is awesome. I found a bottle of one of the first beers that I ever liked in my life. Um, it might be a little bit of an odd beer because um, it's, it's called Tusker. It's a pale lager, and it's from Africa. And I had it in Africa. Um, At the time, I was not 21, but I was of legal drinking age in Kenya. I was in Kenya. Um, The ingredients for this beer, it's a a pale lager, first of all. I think I may have mentioned that. um, Are supposedly all sourced in Africa. Like, I guess they grow the barley in the savannah, uh, the Maasai Mara. Um, the water comes from the Aberdare mountains, which I have been to, I went there. Um, and the yeast is a local culture, but it's a, it's like a German style lager. Um, and, uh, the, this brand has been around apparently since 1922, which means going on, you know, a hundred years, it's 90, 95 years at this point, because it's 2017. Um, so yeah, I have, it's been a long time since I tasted this beer that, you know, when I was a little kid, my dad would give me sips of his beer and it was something like Heineken or, or maybe, maybe a rolling rock. I don't even know what he gave me. Um, but I remember being completely grossed out by it cause I was a little kid, super metallic, you know, like lick, licking a kitchen sink, like bitter, all the bubbles and the carbonation. Cause you know, I was like. I was used to carbonating beverages being like a root beer, like delicious sugary Coca-Cola and stuff like that. So I hated beer. And then uh, I was a teenager, took a trip to Kenya with a good friend of mine um, and his family and uh, got to have beer because I was legally allowed to there, which was exciting. But I still was like, well, I don't like beer, but I'll try. I'll try it. So... This beer I had, and I was like, okay, I like this beer. I had another beer there, too, called Castle Milk Stout, which, regrettably, I, I can't, I haven't been able to find that in a while. But if anyone knows where to find that, shoot me a message. I'd love to try that again. Um, so it's been years since I had this. So who knows what I'm going to think. It's uh, supposedly uh, it was made last year in September, and it's good until it's best by the 13th of September, 2017. So today is actually May 28th, 2017 that I'm shooting this. So I should be good. So let's just open it and find out what the heck my baby palate at the time thought was an incredible, delicious beer and is now a moment of truth. Well, it's super duper clear, very bubbly. Nice little, you know, it's like about a finger and it's going down fast. It smells like a lager. It smells kind of sweet. It smells kind of fruity. It actually kind of has like an apple or a pear. Like bran flake, like cereal, healthy cereal breakfast flake thing going on at cornflakes. I don't know. Tusker. Apparently the co-founder of uh, this Kenya Brewing Kenya Brewing Limited company. Let me do my homework. Kenya Breweries Limited uh, was killed by an elephant during a hunting expedition. That's why they named this Tusker. So um, fun fact for you there. You know what? I like the taste of it a lot. It's light. It's crisp. It's kind of fruity. It has a sweetness to it. Um... It has an aftertaste that is still developing on the palate that I'm, I'm unsure of. It's good. It's a lager. There's nothing crazy about it. It seems solid enough to me. Um, 
I'm not sure about the aftertaste. This aftertaste is like a, a long drawn out kind of little tour of some almost almost a little bit of a little bit of a barnyard hay kind of uh, flavor, which is odd. I, I don't know if it's odd, really. But it's making me think of what I would expect to have as an aftertaste from something like a very light farmhouse ale, not necessarily from a, a pale lager. But that's probably the yeast. I mean, it's I'm guessing it's definitely the yeast and the water. I have no idea what Tusker, what uh, Kenya, Kenya Breweries Limited and Tusker's production, I have no idea what it looks like. I don't know how much they make, if it's a gigantic operation, if it's like a macro thing now. I have not done my homework on it. I just saw it on the shelf at Mr. K's, and I was like, oh, God, I have to have that again. It's good. I will continue to drink it, and I will finish it, and I will not pour any of it out because I think it's still tasty. I don't know if I would go buy it again off the shelf because it was kind of just a nostalgia thing, a trip down memory lane. And they say that like your sense of smell is one of your biggest triggers for memory. But this isn't really triggering memories for me, per se. Although to this day, when I smell diesel fumes, I am immediately transported back to Africa, uh, back to, to Kenya, Nairobi. Also, there's a smell. It's a unique smell, and I haven't smelled it very many times. It's, it's the smell of burning trash. Um, it's not like burning like nasty like plastic bags or anything like that. It's just burning like corn husks and like like things that you would think generally to be biodegradable trash or paper products and stuff like that. They burn it all over the place. Just burn it on the side of the road in, uh, in Kenya. That smell instantaneously brings me back. This one's not really bringing any nostalgia waves with it, but, um, but it's good to know that my taste back then was apparently pretty much okay because it still tastes good to me today. It's not the beer that I would reach for anymore, probably because pale IPAs have dominated my palate for years now. I'll say, though, there's something to be said for a good lager or a Pilsner, something that's a good traditional style that is refreshing and crisp and clean and well done. I think this one's well done. I think... Uh, I think, I think it's all right. Well, thanks for tuning into this little bonus episode, uh, Tasting Tusker. Who knows what I'm going to find and do a little solo dome of next, but um, I can't wait to find out myself. I'm just going to wander around bottle shops and just blow all of the money in my wallet on impulse buys. All right. Thanks for tuning in. In the meantime, don't be a stranger. Stick around for new episodes every Monday. Tune in. Uh, we got video and audio episodes and uh, some fun, cool interviews and stuff coming up in the next few weeks, including Firestone Walker Invitational Beer Festival. I got to get it right. It's a FWIBIF. It's a long acronym. Don't be a stranger. We'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>